Okay, we're here in the Zenith Aircraft Factory and we have a rudder kit. Now, of course, at Zenith, we've been doing rudder kits for years now, but what's special about this rudder kit? Well, this is a bit of a sneak preview into our new 701 project of uh, bringing our older models up to the uh, standard we've set with our Super Duty and sometimes even surpassing that in terms of ease of construction. All right, thanks you uh, for that, Calvin. Uh, you're Calvin, you're the uh, production engineer here at Zenith Aircraft. Yep. And also with us is a familiar face, and uh, who are you, John? John Humbert. I'm project manager. We're trying to get this 701 kit out to you guys where you can build them bottle size mesh drills. That's right. So this is a Stoll CH701. This is a design we've been we've had out since 1986 now, and uh, the the overall shape and size hasn't really changed. But uh, the fact that we're using final hole size mass drill parts really dramatically uh, changes how things are done. And that's the purpose of this video here. So we're gonna show these are just off the uh, off the shelf uh, parts for the Stoll CH701. And I'm gonna have John and Calvin put this uh, rudder assembly together and you're just going to be able to see how quickly and easily this goes together. One of the beauties of reaching this kind of a level of finish on the parts is that it's there's nearly no way to go wrong. Uh, things only fit one way. Uh, if, if holes don't line up, something's not right. Yeah, it's interesting to see out here. You guys are getting started and I see no measuring equipment. I see no marking That's equipment. Right. I just see uh, Clecos and Cleco pliers, isn't it? I love it. It almost becomes assembly instead of building. Right, yeah. right. And that's really an interesting distinction. You know, right, you're assembling a, a part uh, rather than building them in the sense you're doing uh, minor uh, forming and finishing on the actual really, parts I, itself. I kid, I tell people it's almost like an erector set these days, but you've got to come so far and it makes the construction so well. And so this is, again, the, the spar section on the on the rudder tail section and you're attaching the rear ribs here and of course the rear ribs they're all different sizes so they kind of they only fit really one area don't they yep due to the tapered spar if uh, it doesn't fit it doesn't go there but in general that's our goal with a lot of it is to make it uh, as simple and straightforward make sure there's just never any confusion in the process at all right and, and uh, assembly wise we use the IPLs with which is the installation parts list and that's kind of a really a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process aligning all the different parts and pieces isn't it yep gives you a very distinct procedure tells you when to rivet so you don't need to uh, you don't end up doing things out of order just keeps it simple so we're just a few minutes in and we pretty much have the uh, rudder skeleton assembly the internal structure don't we yep yeah, and I see you're just kind of moving the part around till it just fits properly, don't you? Yep, there's a line of holes and the part goes there. Line up, line them up and it goes in. Because, uh, you know, we've been doing uh, the rudder workshops here at the factory, uh, well, since the 19, uh, early 1990s when we started out here, 30 years ago. And I remember, like, I mean, the stage you guys are at now, that was nearly the first day stage in the sense measuring everything together, putting that whole rudder skeleton assembly together. And here we're what, uh, I'll try to put a timer on here, but uh, we're what, a few minutes in the rudder assembly. In, and hold it up here so we can get a, get a nice yeah. uh, view of the of the rudder skeleton assembly. Yeah, that looks really good, guys. So, and, and I know you guys want to take the credit for having done nice work, but uh, probably it's behind the scenes work that you guys have been busy with, isn't it? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes things take a little longer than we'd like, but uh, when uh, when we need to achieve the accuracy and precision to uh, to make sure everything goes together like this, it uh, sometimes takes a bit. Now, normally we would you would uh, at this point uh, be riveting your skeleton together, right? But, uh, right. As a quick demonstration, that's not really necessary, as you can see, since we've got uh, since the whole split go together, ribboning is just another step on that front. Here we're sliding the skeleton into the rear skin, and once again, things are just going to line up and go in. And it's really neat because you guys haven't used a single power tool here either. Nope. Nope. When it, when it comes time for riveting, the power riveter is nice, but... Uh, in yeah. terms of basic assembly like this, it's really unnecessary. Yeah, just all, all by hand. Of course, we hear the power tools in the background, and those are the big CNC machines that make all this magic happen, uh, which is basically pre-drilling, pre-cutting, and, and drilling the final hole size. Can we 
light goes on. Just gonna get the front skin the exact same treatment. Mm -hmm. Lining it up at the top and so just Let's line up the holes together, right? Yep. And these these parts are pretty much all off the shelf kit parts, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't do any special prep ahead of this. Um, I guess the only difference is we don't have the the labels on them, but uh, but that's just a little bit of easy prep. I guess, needless to say, everything is lining up perfectly, isn't it? It is incredible. It really is. Yeah, when you figure these hundreds and hundreds of holes, and it's not just on one, every time there's a hole, it's two pieces of material that have been pre-drilled. Sometimes and more. And that's where it gets tricky, is when we're going through like three or four layers. Right, and right. The sled is misalignment on any of that, and it's just not going to work. But, uh... And, I, and I've noticed uh, in this is that the sequence becomes a bit more important when everything is final full size match drill, isn't it? Yes. It does in a bit of a different way. Because uh, with the parts finished, we're just making room for the beam when we flip it over. Let me get that one. Um, with the parts finished that way, they're only going to want to go together one way. So we're following a bit of a sequence here in little things here with the block to make sure that we're giving the parts what they need to line up properly. So uh, it and just takes uh, takes any variance out of it. Right, and the nice thing is kind of self-jigging when everything is pre-drilled, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's self-jigging, isn't it? Because it will only fit in one, exactly. one area. Now, that said, if you're on a very uneven surface, you might end up hiding it a little bit to get it to pull in like that. But uh, if you set it up properly, all lines up, no problem whatsoever. All right, so now we got it flipped over and we're going to repeat the process on the other side. First, pleacoing our ribs into position and then, uh, and then the nose skin. Yeah, you guys really make it look simple. Well, that music the idea. really is simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true, though, isn't it? You know, I think you guys are also practicing for the Clico competition at the upcoming homecoming, aren't you? Right. <laughs> I don't know. There's some motivated individuals out there. <laughs> it could be a battle. <laughs> and so as a general rule, in terms of the Clico number half what do you do so when we're going to rivet uh every third hole is uh is what we recommend putting a clico uh, every third hole exactly right? so you never want to have three empty holes in a row and that uh in a lot of situations it ends up being overkill but uh it is best practice to ensure that nothing shifts on you while uh while you're moving the rivet and that's and, especially true with the final hole size because this way when you put the rivets in everything really lines up well is that correct right you just want it to slide in you don't want it, you don't ever want to have to be fighting it and okay. just going a little bit a uh, little bit more numerous on the clicos really helps you out there so now we're going to be doing the nose skin it's going to be under tension so it's going to take a little bit to get the first couple of clicos in but uh as we clico it with the final hole size it just all pulls in And that's you can where see here, like the extra pair of hands uh, makes this a little bit easier. Exactly. But working solo, it's still very, very doable. Uh, what we like doing is just tightly taping it, uh, just grabbing a strip of duct tape, tightly taping it over. At which point, it's uh, right. it's a lot simpler to uh, to get things to pull into alignment. Yeah, that's where duct tape or ratchet strap, something just to help holding it in place uh, while you're working, especially larger sections. Like the, the wing leading edge, is that correct? Absolutely. Being able to you know, keep things tight and distribute the pressure really does you favors when getting that uh, fleet coat in for the first time. There we are. Nice job, guys. Yeah, you click over together right here. It's and then, nice of course, uh, riveting it with line rivets, that would take what? Another, what, probably what, 10, 15 minutes, but skill wise, it's yeah, just it's a question of going through it. So, yeah. good job, guys. Thanks, and uh, thanks for watching this uh, new assembly on the uh, Skull CH-701s. We're looking forward to seeing you guys build these things. And fly them, right? Absolutely, absolutely.